Morning, everybody. Welcome back. So when you're ready, let's begin with some of those breathing exercises we do. Just take a few moments to settle into some cross-legged position on your mat. And whenever you've got all that straightened away, close your eyes for a little bit. And redirect your focus to your breath. And take the next few moments to breathe normally. And just pay close attention to your inhale and your exhale. Today, we'll start with an old form of the alternate nostril breath taken from the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, an old school yoga manual. It's a little different than the nine part breath that we've done many times in the past. So when you're ready, lift your right hand up to your face and then place the tip of your index and middle finger right between your eyebrows. Breathe in deeply. Exhale all of your air. Use your thumb to block the right nostril and inhale left. Ring finger blocks the left, exhale out the right. Keep the left side blocked, breathe in right. Block the right and exhale out the left. Again, breathe in left. This time, hold your breath. Block the left and exhale right. Breathe in through the right. Hold. Block the right, exhale left. All right, one more full round. Breathe in left. Block the left and breathe out the right. Breathe in the right. Block the right and exhale out the left. Drop your hand all the way to your lap. Breathe all the way in. Breathe all the way out. And for the next few moments, return to normal breaths. And pay close attention to your inhale and your exhale. And join your hands together in a prayer at your chest. Bring to mind someone you would like to dedicate today's practice to. And send your person some good energy mentally. And when you're ready, then open your eyes. So today we'll start with a few basic stretches for your neck, and then we'll progress on into some other warm-ups and sun salutations. Now, for now, if you will, just slide your right hand under your leg. I'm going to do my left so it looks like we're doing the same thing. Reach your left arm overhead. Grab the side of your skull and really gently drop your left ear toward your left shoulder. For the next few moments, just send your breath into a spot that feels tense or tight. Imagine your breath washing away some of the tension.
Now let go of that side and then switch your hands positioning so that the left hand slides under and that just sort of slides your shoulder down. Reach your right arm overhead and grab the side of your skull. And try to keep your face directed forward so that it's square to the wall that you're looking at and tilt your right ear to wide, towards your right shoulder until you get a solid opening. Deep breaths. Now letting go of that side. Interlace your hands right back there behind your skull. And then draw your elbows forward. And gently draw your chin toward the chest as you apply heavy hands to the back of your skull. Try to keep the majority of your spine relatively up as your chin drives inwards toward your chest. Now lift your chin and gaze forward. Sweep your hands over the top of your skull and slide your knuckles underneath your chin. This one's going to stretch your throat. So press your fists against your jawbone. Take your elbows closer together in the front. For the next few moments, just press your hands against the jawbone until you feel stretch extending from your collarbones upward to your chin. Up in your hands, take a look forward, and then take your right hand to your left knee. Slide your left hip backward just a little further to take your hips out of square. Place your left hand behind you. Initially, rotate your chest and your torso to the left. Once you've set the twist in your spine, look forward, and then gaze all the way off toward your right shoulder, and drag your chin down toward your chest to stretch the neck from that direction. Lift your chin, rotate your gaze back over the left shoulder, and hold that with your gaze locked on a single point on the wall behind. Now release the twist on that side. Slide your right hip a little further back. Now with your hand taken to your knee and your fingertips placed behind you, rotate it first to set the twisting in your spine. And gaze forward and then way off to the left. Draw your chin down toward your left shoulder and breathe into that. And then rotate your gaze directly backward to the wall behind you to rotate your neck in that direction as well. Then release the twist and next up the cat cow kriyas. So come up to the four pointed kneeling stance with your shoulders right above your wrists and your knees slightly behind your hips. Now this one should be done intuitively. Begin by rounding your back and arching your spine, but then feel free to move around more creatively. Intuitive motions are important because everybody's body is a little different. We all carry tension in various places. And if you move around more creatively, you can find the spots that are specific to your body. So as you do this, don't worry about looking pretty. Don't worry about doing the right thing. Just move until it feels good and let your body show you what to do for just a little bit. And all the way, all the way through, just try to keep breathing deeply. And come all the way back to the center. Lower yourself all the way down to your stomach momentarily. A gentle back bend. Prop yourself up on your elbows. Lift your collarbones just a little higher. And then slide your shoulders down away from yours towards your belts. Lift your chin upwards and breathe into that. And taking your hands down to a push-up position, press from the low push-up up to the high. 
Drop your knees to the floor, curl your toes under and back, and then lift your hips up in the air for the down dog. And go ahead and go through some paddling for that. It's early on in the practice and your legs might be kind of stiff, so if your heels don't come anywhere near the floor, it's okay. Actually, it doesn't matter if they ever touch the floor. Just press your heels down until you feel stretch in the backs of your legs. Then take a look forward and lunge your right foot up to the front of your mat. Take your back knee down to the ground. Place your hands on the floor inside of your foot and let your hips sink down and forward to stretch your hamstrings and your hip flexors. At the same time, tuck your ribs downward and inward in the front and just try to keep your spine relatively long as you hold. Meanwhile, let your hips really get heavy and descend down toward the floor. Press all the way back to that downward facing dog. Step your other foot all the way forward and take your back knee down to the earth beneath you. And again, really heavy hips. Let them sink down toward the earth beneath. Take out any rear flow by tucking your two bottom ribs deeper into your body and breathe. And then for today, Surya Namaskara B. Start out with the downward facing dog. Press all the way back to that. This time, press both heels closer to the mat and drive out completely through your hands. Now let your chest drop just a slight bit closer to your legs as well. And take a look forward. Step or hop up to the front of your mat. Come up to your fingers with your inhale. Forward fold with your exhale. Then bend your legs and use an inhale to sweep up to the chair. Both arms lifted. Forward fold as you exhale. Lift to your fingertips on the inhale. Chaturanga push up with an exhale. The up dog with an inhale. Down dog with an exhale. Right foot forward, left heel down. Inhale up to warrior one. Chaturanga push up with your exhale. Up dog as you breathe in. Down dog as you exhale. Left foot forward. Inhale, blow thumbs up. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And the deepest breaths you can draw through your nose. As you continue to breathe, soften your face and your jaw. And then again, step or jump up to the front of your mat. Use your inhale to lift to your fingers. Hold as you exhale. With legs bent, use an inhale to sweep your arms up. Forward fold with your exhale. Lift to your fingertips on the inhale. Chaturanga push up with your exhale. The up dog with an inhale. Down dog with your exhale. Right foot forward, left heel down. Inhale to warrior one. Chaturanga with your exhale. Up dog on the inhale. Down dog with your exhale. Left foot forward, inhale to vertical. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale for the up dog. Exhale for the down dog. Lift your tailbone up. And press your heels down.
All right, final round of those for the moment. Step or jump up to the front of your mat. Use your inhale to lift to your fingers. Hold again with your exhale. Bend your legs and inhale, both arms up. Hold as you exhale. Lift to your fingers on the inhale. Chaturanga push up with your exhale. Up dog with your inhale. Down dog with an exhale. Right foot forward, inhale to warrior one. Chaturanga, exhale. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale. Left foot forward, inhale to warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, the up dog. Exhale, all the way back to the down dog. And then step your right foot all the way forward to the front of your mat. Walk your hands across the ground to face the long edge of the glass. Turn your toes out. Bend both legs substantially. And then from there, come all the way up to your fingertips. With your legs still bent, torso parallel to the floor, reach both arms all the way out to the side of the room that you're in. Try to keep the bend in your legs to keep your body seat building. Crisscross your arms down near the floor. And with your legs still bent, use an inhale to come up to the horse. Interlace your hands behind your skull. Side bend your torso to your right and rotate your gaze upwards toward the ceiling for a bit. Use your next inhale to come out of that one. Switch it over for the same posture on the other side. Use an inhale to come back up. Unfurl your arms to the ceiling, drop down just a slight bit deeper from there. And then straighten out your legs all together. Take a huge and big step to get all the way back up to the front of your mat. And then inhale to sweep your arms up. Forward fold as you exhale. Lift to your fingers on the inhale. Try to run the push up with your exhale. And the up dog with an inhale. The down dog with an exhale. So take attention to your left leg and step that one all the way forward. Come up to a crescent lunge by sweeping your arms out to the sides and up. From there, take your right hand to your right leg. Hook your left elbow over your thigh. Join your hands together in a prayer. And for the next few moments, continue to twist your spine. Deep, slow breaths. And the next time you breathe in, sweep both arms back up to the roof. Chaturanga push up with your exhale. Up dog with your inhale. Down dog with your exhale. Step your other foot forward and use your inhale to come up to the lunge. Take your hand down to your leg. So lean forward, hook your elbow all the way over. And press your hands together and just keep twisting everything sideways. At some point, when you find a point of resistance, just sort of hang out there and maintain the edge of as, as you continue to breathe. Back to the full crescent lunge with an inhale. Chaturanga push up with your exhale. And deep breath in for the up dog. And an exhale for the down dog stretch. Step your right foot forward. Walk your hands across the ground to face the long edge of the mat. Turn your toes out. Bend your legs. Take your hands to your knees and parallel your chest with the floor beneath. Now press your knees apart. Rotate your torso to your right. And try to straighten your left arm a little bit more as you continue to twist your spine.
From there, release the twist, take both hands down to the floor, straighten out your right leg entirely, and parallel your foot with the rear of your mat. Spin your left toes forward, bending your left leg to warrior two position, and use an inhale to spiral all the way up to the upright. Straighten out your left leg entirely. And then set up for the triangle. Reach way out to the side of your body. Up your hand down to your shin or the ankle or the floor. Reach your right arm all the way upward in the air. And just keep twisting everything open to the side. And bend your leg. Take both hands down to the floor. Lock your fingers over to your right, and then turn your toes out for the horse again. With your knees bent, take your hands to your kneecaps. Rotate your torso left this time, and then try to straighten your right arm as much as you can as you continue twisting your spine. Now we've got to get to warrior two in the other direction. So take your hands down to the floor. Start out by straightening your left leg and parallel that foot with the rear of your mat. And rotate your right toes around so they face the back of your mat. And with your right leg bent, spiral and spin all the way up to full warrior two. And the triangle pose all the end of the long. So straighten out your right leg all together. Reach out and forward like you're trying to grab an apple off of a tree. And then from there, drop your hand down to wherever it naturally lands. Reach your left arm up. And as you twist, continue to breathe. And bend your leg and spin upwards for warrior two. Straighten out your leg, take your hands to your waist, and turn your feet to face off to the side. And then this time, walk your hands down the backs of your legs. Lift your hips forward and take a back bend. As you do that, just keep walking your hands down toward the backs of your knees. Shift your hips forward, lift up to the base of your ribs, and breathe. Use an inhale to come back up. Forward forward with your exhale and take your hands down. And then lift to your fingers on the inhale. Forward forward with your next exhale. And slowly stretch the top of your head closer to the ground beneath. Now use an inhale to lift to your fingers. Spin the toes of your left foot up toward the front of your mat. And walk your hands around to place them near either side of the foot and spin your back heel up. Take your rear knee down to the ground. Straighten out your leg as much as possible. Come up onto your heel so your big toes point up. Either hold up there at the top of me, or fold forward and curl your chin to your chest, and attempt to touch your forehead to your knee. And now we're going to get that one on the other side. So bend your front leg. Walk your hands over to face the side of your mat. Keep walking your hands over till your toes face the back, your rearmost heel faces up, and your knee comes down to the mat. Now straighten out your leg entirely and come up onto your heel and square your hips. And from there, as before, either stay up high like me or fold with chin curled to chest and attempt to touch your forehead to your knee. Once more through that wide-legged forward fold. Bend your leg, walk your hands across the ground to face the edge of your mat, turn your toes in, lift all the way up to your fingertips. Forward fold from there and stretch the top of your head nearer the floor beneath. And then for the moment, use your inhale to lift up to your fingertips. Take your hands to your waist. 
stand all the way up with an inhale. Turn your toes out, reach your arms sideways, and take a large step to get back to the front of your mat. And for the next few moments, close your eyes and just redirect all of your focus to your breathing. And now take your hands back to your waist. Draw your right knee all the way up to your chest. Grab a hold of the knee with your right hand and pull it a little higher. At the same time, pull your left hip crease back until your left leg goes straight. And if you want to go further, reach down to grab the blade edge of your foot or your big toe. Tuck your ribs down in the front and extend your foot all the way forward toward the front. Let go of the foot, sweep your arms out to the sides like airplane wings, and lean forward just a little bit at a time for the bird posture. Lift your back leg up into space. Use an inhale to stand up, place one foot next to the other and reach both arms up. Again, join your hands together in a prayer at your chest. And with your hands on your waist, draw your other knee all the way up. Initially, grab the knee and pull it as high as possible. Pull your right hip crease back or the hip crease on your standing leg. Once it's gone straight, if you're going to reach down to grab the foot, do so now. And slowly extend the leg all the way forward to the front. Let go of the foot. Sweep your arms out to the sides. Lean forward just a little bit at a time while lifting your back leg rather. And use an inhale to stand up. Reach your arms up to the ceiling above your head. Join your hands in a prayer at your chest. And then inhale to sweep your arms upwards. Forward fold as you exhale. Lift to your fingers on the inhale. Shot around the push up with an exhale, all the way down to your belly this time. And with your hands still remaining in a push up position, use an inhale to lift everything your chest and your legs and your hands. Come back down with your exhale. Again, inhale to rise. Exhale and drop. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Huge breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Three more times. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, pause at the top. And as you hold, keep breathing into that. Without coming down, just try to relax a little bit. And give it all a little more upper lifts. And then come back down to the floor. Bend your legs and move your ankles from side to side. And back and forth. And before we go on, we've got to tighten up your hamstrings, especially important after stretching. So shift your hips back towards your heels like you're going to do the child's pose. Roll backward over your feet. And then just have a seat on your mat. Slide both legs completely forward. And when you're ready, roll all the way down to lay down on the ground. Now, once you're there, bend your legs as though you're going to do a bridge. Reach your fingers forward and attempt to touch your fingertips to your heels. Now, from there, wiggle your feet even further forward so your feet and your ankles are ahead of your knees. Bend your arms to 90 degrees. Squeeze your elbows into your sides. As you press your elbows into the floor, squeeze your shoulders back in together. Now, lift your toes off the floor as though you were lifting them away from hot coals. Next, lift the balls of your feet, your gas pedals off the floor, so only your heels are touching. 
press your elbows into the earth and drive your heels down and lift your hips upward into the air. Now use an inhale to take your hips down and lift them up with an exhale. Keep going, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Massive breath. Inhale. Exhale, hips lift. Four more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Three. Inhale. Two. Inhale. One, hold at the top. And keep breathing, pressing your elbows and your heels into the floor beneath. Lots and lots of breath, even still. And then all the way back down to the earth. Draw your knees toward your chest. And then just let them rock back and forth and side to side. Next, we're going to start opening your thoracic spine. So reach both arms all the way out to the sides. Wrap your right knee over left. Shift your hips to the right. And with your legs placed in the eagle's position, drop your knees over to the side. As you hold this, reach strongly through your fingertips to get some opening in your chest. The entirety of your spine, especially that middle section of your back, will start to rotate a bit as well. And use an inhale to swivel your knees back up. Square your hips with the midline of the mat and cross your left leg over. Shift your hips left, and then this time drop your knees over to the right side. Stretch through your fingertips so the both arms remain relatively long. Now sweep your knees all the way back upright. Center your hips with the midline of your mat. This time grab the backs of your knees. Rock all the way up to a full seated position. Once you've done so, plant your hands and hop back to the high plank. From there, lower all the way down to your stomach. Wrap yourself up on your elbow so you look like a sphinx again. Now this one, the shoulders tend to shrug, so press your elbows down, which will slide your shoulders down. Lift up through your collarbones. And this time, since you're a bit more warmed up than you were at the beginning, if you like to straighten your arms, go for it. That can be a lot on your lower back, though, so if it bothers you, elbows down instead. This time, you'll have to consciously slide your shoulders toward the floor. Level your face with the wall in the room that you're in, and just keep breathing again. And take your elbows back down to the earth. Parallel your arms so that the right arm is in front of the left. And then just walk your hands across the floor over to your sideways. And try to keep your arms underneath your collarbones. If you want to decrease the stretch, lift your chest a little bit like you're in the Sphinx. Otherwise, let your body's weight descend down on top of the arms. And deep breath sent into your shoulders. Now lift your chest, slide your arms apart, and with your left forearm parallel to the front of the mat, place your right hand in a push-up position near the base of your ribs. Bend your right leg, reach your right hand over the top of your foot, and press your heel down. 
Alternatively, if it's hard to reach the foot, just grab the inside of it and draw it toward your head. And tuck your tail as you work on stretching your quadriceps. Completely up to you, but if you want to make it a little more challenging, parallel your left forearm with the side of your mat, or at least make it parallel-ish, and then work on lifting your elbow off the floor so you combine the cobra and the rug. And then take your elbow back down if it was indeed lifted up. Parallel your arm so that the left arm is in front of right this time. Walk your hands across the floor. And get the dragon flat on the second side. Level you back with the ceiling. Feel free to lift your collarbones higher if you want to decrease the stretch. Or increase it by letting your ribs sink down. Lift your chest just a little and place your left hand in a push-up position. Slide your right elbow over a little further to the side so it's supportively placed. Bend your left leg. Then reach back to grab the inside of your foot. Or put your hand on the top of the foot itself and press down to stretch the muscles in the front of the left thigh. That's the basis of the stretch, and it's not altogether necessary to deepen, but if you want some deepening, make your right forearm parallel-ish to the front of your mat. Work on lifting your right elbow off the floor as you keep pressing down through your foot. Let go of all of that and take everything back down to the earth. And this time around, plant your hands near the bottom of your ribs and press to an upward dog with an inhale. Lift your hips upright again for the down dog stretch. Lift up to the tips of your toes. Press your chest a little closer to your knees and let your head drop nearer to the floor. Now, if this bothers your shoulders at all, back off a little bit. Otherwise, still lift it to your tiptoes. Keep your arms straight. Let your head sink nearer to and nearer to the earth. Once you've got some solid shoulder extension, press your heels down toward the floor at the same time. Roll to a plank position. Drop your knees to the floor. Shift your hips back a little bit for the puppy dog pose. Once your thighs feel close to vertical, wrap your hands forward and let your chest sink closer to the floor. Chin down or forehead to the earth if you're able. Otherwise, head up with chest or drop to the end. Now, lift your elbows off the floor. Walk your hands back. Crisscross your legs behind you, go backward to a seated position, and to put all that together, just go ahead and lay down on the ground again. Once you're down, bend your legs and plant your feet on the floor. Squeeze your arms into your sides and bend your arms to 90 degrees. Press your elbows into the earth to squeeze your shoulders back in together, and then lift your hips upwards for the bridge. If you're ready, plant your hands on the sides of your head with elbows up for the wheel. Drive down through your hands to come up to the deeper back bends and breathe. Few more rounds of breath. And then for the moment, all the way back down to the floor beneath. Just let your hands rest on your belly or your chest and feel all that energy pouring through your body. Straighten your left leg on the floor and slide your hips over to your right. 
Drop your bent leg across your body over to the left. Take your left hand to the knee to press it nearer to the floor. It's okay to let your right shoulder lift a bit off the ground if necessary. And then reach your right arm out to the side and lift it upward and backward a little bit. So you have a diagonal angle from your right knee, from your left knee rather, all the way out through your left hand. Use an inhale to swivel back up. Shift your hips way over to the other side and repeat. So the right leg is straight. The left foot comes to the knee and rotates across the body. Now, sometimes it's good to keep your shoulder anchored to the floor, but right now it's okay to lift it. So, completely off the floor. And your arm out to the side. And elevate your arm up and down to lift diagonal, extending from your left knee to your left fingertips. And then just reach your fingertips as you continue twisting. Let's swivel all the way back up. This time, touch your fingers to the sides of your head or gently cradle your head with your palms. Draw your knees toward your chest and lift your feet off the floor. And belly crunch up like you're doing a sit-up. And then straighten your left leg. Dip your left elbow toward right knee and alternate back and forth for some old school bicycles. It's always important to tighten up your core after back bending. Try to keep your shoulders and chest lifted as you continue on with your pedaling. And keep on going. Now for the moment, recline all the way back down onto the floor beneath. Reclining pigeon, cross your right ankle over your left leg. If you want to modify, you can use your right hand to press the knee away from the body. Otherwise, thread the needle, grab some portion of your left leg. As you recline backward on the floor, pull your left knee towards you, and at the same time, press your right knee away. Try to squeeze your shoulders back in together by sliding them down towards your hips. Now let go of the leg, cross the other one over, either press the knee away from the body or thread the needle if you want a deeper stretch. And draw your right knee towards you and press your left knee away. And then finally, the corpse pose flat out on your back on the floor. Feel free to make any final adjustments you need to so you can get comfortable and still. And once you've settled in, just scan your body one more time for anything that needs to be shifted. Shift around as necessary till you can really relax backward into the mat.
Well, I remember once awkwardly waiting backstage for the Dalai Lama to appear to give a speech. It was in downtown Boston. Now, at the time, I had helped to organize the events, and because of that, and I was given the opportunity to provide the Dalai Lama something called a kata scarf with a couple of friends. A kata scarf is something traditional that you give a Lama when they come to do a lecture or give a teaching of some type. So you present the scarf to the Lama, they give it a blessing, and they give it back to you. Now, as we were waiting there, we were waiting basically where we thought he would be walking, and he came in the door followed by an entourage of, I would say, probably around 20 people. But unfortunately, my friends and I had misjudged where he was going to come in, and he actually started to walk toward the elevator, which was about 50 feet away from where, away from where we were standing. Now, when you interact with the Lama, there are all sorts of different traditional protocols in place. And one particular protocol is that you should always bow when they enter the room. So we were bowed, sort of folded halfway over. And one other element of the protocol is that you should never turn your back on a llama. And so whenever they're walking, you always turn to face them, no matter which direction they walk, as a sign of respect. So we, my two friends and I, were standing about 50 feet away from the Dalai Lama, bowed over halfway, and turning around, spinning a 180-degree circle so he wouldn't turn his back on us. So we wouldn't turn our backs on him. And at first, he didn't see us at all. It just felt like a really, really awkward contortion. Now, at some point, I think he caught us out of his peripheral vision. He actually started to chuckle to himself a little bit, and he stopped his entire entourage in place. He walked directly over to us, and taking time out of his important schedule to receive the offering. He did it, and then he hopped back on the elevator. Now, for him, perhaps it was a small thing, but for us, it was really big. You know, each and every single one of us really respect the Dalai Lama, and we were very excited to meet him. But the fact that he took time to actually come over and greet us, even though he could have kept walking, was actually kind of an amazing thing. Now, afterward, you know, he went on to give a really inspiring lecture. He talked for many hours about the importance of cultivating human love and compassion for other people in our life. And indeed, he said that mind training exercises that help to accomplish that are one of the keys to surviving as a human species. He pointed out that if we can't support each other with love and kindness, that the human species really has no hope. You know, it's through supporting one another in all these various challenges in the world that we're able to proceed and progress. Now, afterward, when he finished the lecture, I very much expected him to take a break. He had chambers set up downstairs in the hall. But he didn't take a break at all for the first half hour of his hour-long lunch break. Despite the fact that he had gotten up very early in the morning to meet with public officials, despite the fact that he had spent hours and hours lecturing, during the lunch hour, he actually went downstairs to meet with the weak and the infirm from Boston. Many of the Tibetans from the community who were sick and otherwise experiencing maladies basically came to receive his blessing. So he spent a whole half of his lunch hour actually blessing those people, talking to them about their troubles, and hopefully helping to give them a little bit of peace. And a little bit over the course of that day, I saw the Dalai Lama treat other people with respect and kindness. It didn't matter whether it was the person running the elevator, person delivering them some water over the lunch hour, or a really important public figure. He treated every single person with a sign of respect. And I thought all those things collectively taken were a really great indication that he truly is a great man. And even so, after the well, noon hour, I went outside to check the front of the theater to make sure that everything was operating appropriately. I was really surprised to find about 300 protesters protesting the Dalai Lama's presence. At that point, I was kind of shocked. I thought, man, this guy's an amazing guy. I wonder what they could be so upset about. But upset they were. You know, they were really mad that he was there. They wanted to protest his presence, and they were banging drums and tooting horns and all sorts of other things to make sure that their presence was known. Now, at that point for me, it was actually kind of an amazing experience because I realized perhaps for the first time in my life very deeply that it doesn't matter who you are, you can never make every single person happy. Now, for me, that's an important realization because I like to have people happy around me. And a lot of times I do all sorts of different contortions to please the other people in my life. Now, sometimes that's absolutely important to do, but other times I sort of find myself losing contact with my true self. As I try to be something that another person wants, as I try to please the people around me to make them happy, then at some point I just lose contact with my center. I think the Dalai Lama is a good example of someone who can actually say what he thinks, stand by his opinions and stances, while still extending love and kindness out to other people. Now, I know that for me in particular, when I do meditation, if I have lost contact with those deeper elements of myself, meditation helps to get it back. There's something about laying it down there on the floor. You take off your social mask for a little while, you let all your stressors and troubles drop away, and all of a sudden it starts to feel like you are just a little bit more like your true self. Now, I found over and over again that that true self is a little bit more open than the self I typically take around the world. 
it's more able to connect other people. Compassion is felt when I make contact with that part of myself. And I think the love that I experience for other people as well as myself becomes a little more spontaneous and easy to find. Now, I don't know if you do some of the contortions that I do, but regardless, I think it's good to recenter with yourself at least once per day. So we shall continue on with that for today. So if you will, just continue on getting heavy and still. While I've been talking, your heart rate has dropped. So return to completely normal breaths without changing your breath in any way, shape, or form. Just shift awareness to your eyes. And for the next few moments, stay centered there. And then shift awareness to the middle of your throat. As you focus there, physical sensations may arise, and that's okay. Stay focused on your throat throughout. If a physical distraction really shifts your mind elsewhere, just notice that it's there, accept its presence, and redirect to the middle of your throat. And just try to keep your gaze centered there. Shift awareness to the tips of your shoulders next and focus on those points. As you focus, you may have lots of feelings arising. All the positive, negative, neutral mental projections you put onto things, whether they be physical objects, thoughts that you experience, visions that arise, and other such things. As you stay focused on your shoulders, just ignore all of that inner noise. Let it be there, but refuse to interact and stay focused on your shoulders. And then shift awareness to your elbows next. Sometimes as you focus on one single thing, lots of thoughts and concepts arise. You might think, for example, am I doing this right? Perhaps you think, wow, this is a great meditation. I've been so excited to do all this this week. Or you might be thinking the opposite. You might be thinking, oh man, what a waste of time. I can't be, wait to be done with this. Or many other things as well. As you stay focused on your elbows, let all those things be there. But refuse to interact and keep your awareness centered on the elbows themselves. Shift awareness to your wrists. Same exercise. Stay focused there through distraction. Let your mind and your body settle. Palms of your hands. Tips of your fingers. A shift awareness to your hips. Kneecaps. Ankles. Bottoms of your feet. Tips of your toes. Right and left side of your body. Back of your body. Navel, center chest, tips of the shoulders.
back of the neck. And then send awareness from your heart out to the palms of your hands. And from your heart to the bottoms of your feet. And from your heart to the base of the spine and again upward to the top of your head. So the needs and the preferences and the likes and dislikes of every person's mind on this planet are so many and various. They're like clouds in the sky. And because we all have different needs, likes, and preferences, there's no possible way that if you're being your true self that everybody is going to like you. And I think that that's okay. Now, even so, I think that if you can actually project your true sense of self, you find the people who resonate with what you have to offer. And that's a wonderful thing. But it doesn't mean that you still can't connect with those other people that you don't see eye to eye to with. So this final practice is something you can do in meditation to help with that. So for the next few moments, just bring to mind somebody in your life who bothers you just a little bit. Somebody who might not like you, somebody you've had negative interactions with in the past. And then for the next few moments, send positive energy every time you exhale. Send your love and your compassion carried by your breath. If that person needs physical, emotional healing, imagine you could send it to them. Imagine them becoming happier and imagine them healing in your mind. And every time you exhale, send all of your love and all of your compassion. Imagine that person receiving happiness and healing. For just a little while, though you don't see eye to eye in the actual world, connect to them and open your heart and your mind. And for the next few moments, just relax mentally. And whenever you feel ready, then let yourself roll over to one side. With both eyes closed, come back to a seated and cross-legged posture of some type. And then join your hands together in a prayer at your chest. Remember the person you dedicated today's practice to. Now to pray for or maybe wish for their happiness and their help. Just send them some good energy if that's your preference. Take a moment to be grateful for another day. If you wish, repeat after me. May all sentient beings everywhere experience peace. <laughs>